my family growing up, fire was a major part of our lives. My favorite part was the many campfires that we had. We camped a lot. And we also had fires in our backyard. Can't imagine how many hot dogs and marshmallows, mountain pies that I ate while sitting around those campfires throughout my childhood. Those were some great times. The other major way that fire was part of my childhood was with my family legacy of being a firefighter in the small town of Osceola Mills. Seems like all of my family who lived there were firefighters. Both my grandfather and my dad were fire chiefs for a portion of that time. Dealing with fire was just part of being a Boffman. So naturally, I was intrigued when I saw this infomercial the other day. Check it out. The U.S. A house fire is reported every 82 seconds. Do you have a fire extinguisher? Do you know how to use one? Hi, Anthony Sullivan here. If you've ever experienced a fire, you know every second counts. That's why I'm here to tell you about Cold Fire, the easy to use, super effective fire suppressant that instantly extinguishes flames and leaves surfaces cool to the touch. Professionals have trusted Cold Fire for years, and now it's being made available for home use. I would definitely use Cold Fire in my home around my family. Cold Fire extinguishes fires rapidly and safely. Fire extinguishers are hard to use and leave a residue that's toxic. Cold Fire is non-toxic and clean up safer and quicker. Grease, fabrics, woods, fuels. Cold fire puts out flames in seconds. I believe in cold fire so much, I'm gonna set myself on fire. Do not try this at home. Now that's the power of cold fire. Too good to be true? I don't know because I haven't tried any, but who knows? It certainly looks better than some of those other infomercials that we have seen. So fire. Why am I talking about fire today? Because of the too good to be true Bible story, which we're going to look into today. It's really a good story. And yes, there's fire involved. We find it in the section of the Bible called the prophets, specifically in the book of Daniel. To set this story up a little bit, let me share a little bit of the backstory first. The people of Israel were not following God very well. So God allowed them to be beaten up by the great kingdom of Babylon. And as part of that conquering process, a bunch of the best of the best in Israel were taken from their home and made to live in Babylon partly to keep Israel from springing back up into a viable country, and also to make Babylon better. The three guys in our story today, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were some of those best of the best. And they were awesome young men. They were such good leaders that earlier in the book of Daniel, we see King Nebuchadnezzar put them in charge of parts of the kingdom of Babylon. But now... In our story for today, the situation is about to change for them, and these three men are faced with a tough decision. You see, although they're living in Babylon, their heart was still in Israel with God. They still loved God with all of their hearts. But could that get them into trouble? Let's see as we look into Daniel chapter 3, starting in verse 4. Then a Herod shouted, People of all races and nations, language, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground and to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Uh-oh. Things just got a little hot for these guys. Again, they want to love God with all of their heart following God's ways, even here in Babylon. And if these guys know God's law as given to Moses, they would have surely known the top two commands of the Ten Commandments. Do you remember them? In Exodus chapter 20, we would read this. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself any idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea. 
you must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. Well then, that's almost exactly what King Nebuchadnezzar is expecting all the people of his kingdom to do. What happens? Let's see. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Was it really all the people, including Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, it seems there were some other leaders of the Babylon kingdom who were also watching to see what these guys would do. Let's jump down to verse 12 to see how these other leaders from Babylon report to the king. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the provinces of Babylon. They pay no attention to your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue that you have set up. Wow. So they didn't do it. They stood their ground. Well, at least to this point in the story, they did. Will they continue to stand up to the king's rules? Even when things get hot around the collar? We continue. King Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or worship the gold statue that I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue that I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you res refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Wow, that is a tough place to be. Can you feel the heat that these three godly men were feeling? Why don't you pause the video for a few minutes to discuss those first couple of questions, including reading how these guys respond to the king, and then come back. Wow, these guys were faced with a hard choice but the choice didn't seem too hard for them, did it? It would have been interesting to check their heart rates at this part of the story. For them, following God was the most important thing in their life, even if it meant the loss of their lives. They believed that God could keep them safe in the fire if God wanted to do that. But even if God would allow them to die, they were not willing to bend on their convictions to follow God. We didn't even get to the miraculous part of the story yet, but seeing their decision was almost too good to be true, wasn't it? For us, there aren't too many of us who will face a decision this big in our lives. There aren't too many blazing furnaces in Gillette. But there are some hot moments for us in our walks with God. God calls us every day to make choices. Follow him or not. Tell others about Jesus or don't. Trust God with your finances or don't. When you're driving through Gillette and someone else is driving like a knucklehead, the choice, love your enemy or don't. What about this one? When you have an opportunity to look at something online that both God and your spouse would not appreciate, something like pornography, you have a choice to follow God's heart or not. Every day, every day we are faced with choices. Choices to follow God or don't. Choosing one direction is blessed and the other well, the other can get us burned. But what about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do they get burned? I'm going to have you stop the video and read the rest of the story and discuss the last couple of questions. But as you read the rest of the story, 
Notice that when people are willing to follow God, no matter what, good things happen, both to those making those choices and to others as well. And God gets the glory for those good choices we make. Enjoy the rest of the story and the discussion, and I will see you on Sunday.